MG Rob back with you. And we're back on the Healy 3000. And today we're going to work on the rear brakes. All right, so this car ended up getting kind of pushed aside for a little while while I was doing all the remodeling and a lot of the work on the shop. And the uh, owner of the car wasn't worried about getting it back anytime soon, so he was perfectly fine with that. Now this car had been sitting for yeah, 10 plus years. So when he tried to bring it over here, this wheel was locked up. So both the wheel cylinders were froze up and the shoes were stuck to the drum here. And in the last video I had gotten this unstuck, but then I put it all back together because I knew I wasn't gonna be working on it right away. So we'll start with getting the drum off. So you gotta take the adapter here off for the which I didn't really tighten it too much before. It's obviously coming off pretty easy. Normally, I'd say you want to get in here and back the adjuster off all the way before you try to pull the drum off. But I've actually already done that. That's wrong. Great, now I'm the right size screwdriver in my box. So then we got these little drum retaining screws and then the drum should just pull off in this case quite easily because I know I'm going to turn off and then back the shoe roll adjustment off far enough to do that So the shoes in this case are actually still pretty new as far as mileage. They've been on the car for a long time, but they were also frozen to the drums and we decided we're just gonna go ahead and replace them. And there's no real hold down on these things. So you can just, you know, pull it, get the spring out of there and get it out of the wheel cylinder. And the biggest issue here is the um, e-brake. Since the wheel cylinder itself is frozen, that makes it a bit more difficult. I'm gonna find a Phillips when I want to learn earlier. If this wasn't frozen, this would slide back a little, making that a lot easier to get that out. So then you get in behind here, take the um, brake line loose, get the wheel cylinder out. These wheel cylinders are very similar to the ones that are in Triumphs. They can slide back and forth. And then they have a rubber uh, boot around them to cover the hole as it's sliding back and forth. So we take that out and then let any brick fluid that might still be in the system drain. In this case, we may not actually have anything draining out, but normally you would. So you put, a, put something down there to catch it. And then we want to take loose all the e-brake cable stuff here, or in this case, it's a rod, which was a pin back here. The clevis pin, and you want to look at the clevis pins, see what kind of wear you have in them while you're in there. 
So these have two little clips that lock together this way to hold it all in there. But there's little um, notches here where it's got tabs that stick up and lock them together. So you gotta flex this thing up enough to unlock it out of that tab and then get it to pop over like that before you can get it apart. Hard to, hard to do this without getting in the way of the camera. And then you just gotta pull this other one out, which is, you gotta flex it past the uh, e-brake lever. And then this is ready to pull out. <clears throat> one thing you always wanna do is make sure that your adjuster is actually working properly. Sometimes they'll get stuck and you can't even back them off because the uh, screw which the steel screw gets stuck in the aluminum. And if that happens, you actually can save them. You don't have to replace them because you can take it off the backing plate as long as you don't break any of the studs off and take out the wedges. Looks like in this case, the wedges are a little stiff. So we'll clean those up, lubricate those. And then you can actually heat this up with a propane torch dunk it down in some coal and some water and that because the aluminum and steel expand at different rates they'll shock it and get the, the bolt to actually come loose in the threads and then you can get it apart clean it up lubricate it and put it all back together all right so i guess i was wrong because this thing is stuck or at least stiff enough i can't move it off the car so good time to show you how to do this so basically we're just going to heat this up and then dump it in some water this will take a minute or two and it doesn't come loose the first time around and what you do is just heat it up a little bit more and dump it again you just didn't get hot enough the first time. Now you don't need to like really, you know, heat it up to the point of trying to melt anything. You're just trying to get some expansion out of it and contraction with the heating and cooling cycle. And you want the heat to go into where the threads are. These are almost exactly the same thing as what's on the B, they're just working. And of course the midget goes through the backing plate, so that's a whole different deal. You can still use the same kind of thing and heat it up a little bit, but I'm not gonna dump that. It doesn't usually take a lot of heat. So now I can take that out, clean wire brush the threads off. And I usually like to run through there with a tap real quick too, just to make sure the threads are clean and then lubricate the threads, put it back in and you can reassemble it. Well, I found out why I was having so much difficulty getting this clip in here and behind there. Um, these are the aftermarket wheel centers. We didn't spend the money on this one on the, because there's a huge price difference. You know, 15 bucks versus 70 bucks a piece. 
And we just went with these because I've actually had really good luck so far with the aftermarket wheel cylinders. But there is a difference in the casting on these. So when you put this in here, you can actually see that this here is even so that this sits flush on the backing plate. With this one, these aren't near cast as deep. So it's not flush, it's sticking out that much. And this shoe is already sticking out about that much more than this one. So we're talking double that distance pushing out, which gives you a, a lot less room to actually get this in here especially with the rubber behind there. Now, it might actually work, but it'd be very difficult to get it together. So that's the problem. So I guess this would be a good time to talk about aftermarket parts quality. It's been a problem, and it continues to become a worse and worse problem every year, as it seems. And it's not just on our British cars. It's everything. It's all over the internet of every automotive channel you want to watch. So it's not just us, but you got to realize that our cars are really low volume cars. So nobody wants to make parts for them. So pretty much all this stuff comes out of China. And this is what you're going to deal with in today's economy. Now, I did get these parts from Moss, but this isn't Moss's fault directly. Now, granted, they're quality control. They can't always check every single batch of parts, and sometimes we become the quality control. But that's part of a business that size and trying to keep the cost down because, let's face it, British car owners are notoriously cheap a lot of times. So, you know, they got to keep the price down somehow. And this is aftermarket parts. It's not stuff that Moss contracted to have made. If they have the classic gold label on them, then they've contracted to have them made, so it's their specs and their quality control. So yeah, you can, you know, you can complain about those parts directly to them about the quality, but if it doesn't say classic gold on it, then they're just purchasing them and you know, they're, they're the middle end. So I have had good luck. In the past, with all the aftermarket wheel cylinders, slave cylinders, and all that stuff, I've not had really any fitment issues, and they're lasting just about as long as the OE ones. Nothing's actually OE anymore. It's like TRW or somebody else owns the rights to the original stuff and calls it OE. But in this case, there was a huge price difference between the TRW stuff and the aftermarket. So I did go ahead. I was on the fence about using aftermarket on the Healy. Um, but now I'm going to go ahead and order the TRW to put on it. So that's all we're going to have for now until I get the new wheel cylinders, or at least for the rear brakes. But we got other stuff we can work on up too. So. It's MG Rob. Later.